Hello, hello, testing, testing, one, two, one, two, one, two, we are live. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much for joining in. And as usual, if you are live in the chat and you can hear me and see me, please let me know that the sound and the audio is all working OK. Uh, I've had a heck of a morning. I have literally just finished filming a review video, looked at the time and went, oh, I've, I've got this in five minutes. Um, so yes, this arrived this morning. Um, and this, this, this is another Another video. Some people might be watching this and thinking, oh, that, that Paul Grogan guy, oh, I'm really jealous of him. He's got Cloudspire, he's got Tainted Grail, he's got Marvel Champions. How does he get all of these games before they're out? Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm working on this game. I, I wrote the rulebook for this game. It took me three months. And I am doing the official how to play tutorial video for this game. The plan is to get the video done before Essen. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to or not. Anyway. On with the unboxing. This is on Mars. This is, I think Vittel's got his copy of it. Um, but this is one of the first copies that's, that was basically got to me as soon as possible. Because, as I say, I am going to be filming the video on it. And I need to be getting on with that video as soon as possible. Um, let's switch to the overhead camera so you don't have to look at me all the time. There we go. And is the chat working? The chat is working. What do we have? We have a few people here. Excellent. Um, now, the scrolly thing isn't working in there. Interesting. Or is it? No, scrolly thing is not working in there. So the scrolly thing, I'm going to have to look at this screen. Um, yeah, thank you everybody for joining me. And here we go. So as you can see, I have literally, I've not even opened this beforehand. So, oh, there we go. Is it still going out? Because I'm looking at my screen and it's saying, please stand by. But... The stream seems to be going out. I don't know. Chris is here. Hello, Chris. Johnny on the table is here. Um, Graham's not watching them back. Let me know if this is going out or not, because on my on my screen, it doesn't appear to be going out. But I assume it is. Otherwise, somebody would have said something. Let's just refresh that and see what's happening. Uh, OK, there we go. Right. Open it. Open it. Yes. Sorry for that. So if this is all broken and dented and not good this is not going to be a good advert for the game at all is it but i i wanted to give you this absolutely raw as it comes and that is that is very loud so apologies if you've got one of those sensitives to the sound of bubble wrap or whatever i'm sure some people have got that polystyrene is one of the things i i can't stand polystyrene plastic Plastic spoons or forks on polystyrene. Ugh. Hate it. Oh, Josh is here. Hello, Josh. I'm going to have to stand up for this. This is... Basically, it's going to be a half hour video of Paul getting off the bubble wrap. Well, we are going to get there. Well, if you're worried about it not being thoroughly wrapped. What a mess I'm making of this. Right, let's get rid of that. Oh, that's heavy. Right, so the first thing is, um, yeah, I'm extremely disappointed because this Ian O'Toole character, yeah, this is, this is not on. You see, I submitted my own box art for this game and they said that they were going to use my box art for the game and not Ian's, and I'm really disappointed because they've used Ian's. And my box art, as you can see, if that's not too bright, I don't know if that is too bright. Um, yeah, my box is my box art is just far better, and, I, and I, I'm half the price of Ian O'Toole. But anyway, yeah, I must speak to them about that. Maybe they'll do like a limited edition with my box art. I mean, they've even got Matt Damon on it and everything. Anyway, no. Seriously, for those people who are watching, um, <laughs> you know, Tool is one of my favourite artists, and this is this is fantastic. So, the first thing is the box is not sitting completely flat, and I'm assuming that is because we have some stuff in the top. So here we go. Uh, as it comes now, these are these are sort of loose in the top. Uh, these are the player aid cards. Let's get that out of the way. Let's get that out of the way. 
get that out of the way. Do we need to zoom in a bit more? Let's zoom in a bit more. There we go. Uh, Skipper2206 is saying yours is too small. Yeah, I hear that a lot um, in all ways of life. Um, right, so we got these player aids. Now, these, these are nice. These are actually, I didn't know they were going to do this, but this is on card. Um, let me know if that looks too bright. It looks too bright for me. I'm going to turn down the brightness a little bit on the overhead cam because it does look a bit bright. There you go. How's that? Right. So anyway, yeah, these player aids, which me, Ian and Vital took ages on because there's loads of information on these. Um, yeah, for those people who don't know, I, I basically helped write and edit the rule book for this game uh, and all, all things like this. Uh, and thanks very much to the people who helped out with that as well. You know who you are. Um, yeah, I also did some game development on it as well. But anyway, back to the unboxing. So that's them. Um, we have we have the rule book. Now, it's nice to see it in print. Yeah, I mean, literally months of work went in. Oh, there's a typo there. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, months of work went into this. So make your own mind up uh, whether you think the rule book is good or not. It is a heavy, complex game. So please don't judge. You know, there are some people who go, oh, the rule book was terrible. And it's like, no, actually, the rule book's good. It's just a heavy game. And you struggle to learn it because it's a heavy game. So don't don't blame the rule book for that. Um, there's the reference book as well. So all of the tiles in the game. Again, I, I spent months looking at this. So this is nothing new to me. Um, but yeah, it's all there. This is the reference book. This is the one you'll pass around as the game goes on. Um, because people will need to look up a few things. I say you'll need to look up a few things once you've played it a couple of times. Most of it is self-explanatory. The only thing I think you will need to look up once you've played it once or twice is possibly some of the blueprints because you're not going to get them out all game. Right, anyway, that's those two. We have the upgrade pack. So this is extra contact cards, contract cards, private goals, and a board for your blueprint cards. Yeah, so the upgrade pack rules for those people who get the upgrade pack. Um, Tribulation is saying the rulebook is in two parts. So this is the thing. The, there's the rule book, which is the rules of the game, but then the explanation of what all the different tiles do is all in here. And I agree with this approach because, um, as I say, it means you can, this is separate, you can pass it around. And I think Tapestry has just done the same thing. Isn't Tapestry got like a four page rule book? But then, um, but, th but then there's like a reference book with everything in. Oh, right. The other two player aids. I was going to say there shouldn't just be two of them because it's a four player game. So, yeah, two sided player aids. These are on. Uh, these are on card. They're a little bit bent, probably from shipping, but they'll they'll go flat. That's fine. Yeah, they're nice. Um, so yeah, upgrade pack is the board for the blueprints. Um, Vince is wondering what's the deal with the huge square rulebook. Yeah, personally, I much prefer rulebooks that are letter sized or A4 size. Um, but you know that that's one of those things. They're 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 okay. They're just. It's just a different way of doing it. But yeah, personally, I prefer normal, normal letter sized rule book. Uh, it's not as bad as what people are saying. Some people are saying, oh my God, every square rule book is absolutely impossible to read. No, it, it's not as bad as that. It's just, it's a preference thing. Um, you know, I've read many square rule books and I haven't had any problem with them. So anyway, right. So we have the blueprints board. So this was in the upgrade pack. This is not needed. If you do not have this, you can still play the game totally fine. It's just a board where you put cards on, really. Um, that's what that is. Okay, it's time to move the big box aside and let's look at the actual game board. Don't need the scissors anymore. Let's keep them out of the way. So I have three boards of this somewhere in the house from the different prototypes that Vittel kept doing and Ian kept doing and I kept getting, because yeah, I was a developer on this game for months. Um, so there we go. That's a really nice touch. That is obviously the back of the board with Vittel's signature. Um, is it going to sit flat? Yeah, I think it's going to sit flat. Yeah, roughly-ish. So yeah, you got Vittel's signature. So if anybody wants to forge your signature and, you know, write some checks, then that's there. But yeah, that's nice. It's just the, the bare artwork. And now let's have a look at the other side. Now, a lot of you have seen this before. 
Uh, but yeah, this looks much better than my, my, you know, my one that I printed off at a local printer. And then, um, yeah, it is gorgeous. Ian O'Toole at his best. Um, although to be fair, a lot of us were involved in this. I mean, obviously Ian and Vittel are the main people that do the graphic design, but then you've got people like myself. As I say, I was a developer on the game uh, and we were helping out with some of the iconography to make sure it was clear and it was understandable. So there's, there's little bits of this board that I can look to and go, oh yeah, I suggested that. Um, but yeah, this is nice. This is the final version of the board. I've not actually seen this really. So it's not quite sitting flat. It's going to need, yeah, just a little bit of a bend in the opposite direction. Be very careful when you do that. But once you've done it, it should hopefully sit flat. There we go. Uh, right, there you go. Johnny on the table says he's going to have to buy another board just to frame this one and put it on the wall. Yes, you probably are. Okay. Back to the box, what do we have? So we have a scientist board. Um, now, I didn't have that when I, when I had the prototype. So this is actually really useful um, because what you do is you put your scientists on it and then when you slide them down, you reveal the upgrades. So that's quite, that's quite good. Um, the color seems a bit yellow as well. Maybe there's a bit too much contrast. Don't know. Anyway, stop fiddling with the colors. Now, here we go we have the player boards and again i have so many versions of these player boards in my house from the different prototypes but these are the dual layered ones um and yeah these are th these are these are nice these are really nice so again i mean you know somebody who likes medium or well he heavy complex games you look at that board and you're like oh i'm in love with this you just look at the detail on it and everything so many things in here make a lot of sense uh, in the game and all the iconography and everything else but this is really really nicely done and what i'm going to do now so there's four of them purple is objectively the best color in the world so i'm going to take the purple player board and we're going to start populating it with pieces from here bit of foam must be a stretch goal or something so unfortunately and this is one of the problem with inserts is when you transport them the stuff doesn't completely stay where they are it's got a lid which is nice and they've gone with this red plastic lid which is nice but as you can see a lot of the components have actually moved about so i'm gonna have to look at and the static has got that card i'm gonna have to look at some way of keeping this uh plastic thing in place in order to stop all of these pieces from basically doing this when I transport the game around places. Um, but yeah, so here we are, and we have these, so you can take them out. Ah, uh, I see. This is the punch board, so this is pre-punched. Now, I'm confused. If Vittel is in the chat, or if Randall from Watch Your Game is in the chat, please let me know what's going on here. Has somebody pre... Because I, I took the... Did I take the cellophane off? No, I didn't. So I think... This is already, I think this is an open copy. I think Randall said he sent me his copy. So I don't think this is how you get it. I think this is, Randall has got this, he's opened it up, he's punched all of the components and he's put it back in the box for me. I think that seems to make sense. Yeah, second hand game. Yeah, exactly right. Um, because it does seem odd if this is what backers get, that they get all of this. And that is why the box didn't quite sit flat is because these were in there. So once these have been taken out, I'll recycle them, then, is this one piece? Yeah, this is one piece. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, so yeah, it must have all been punched out already. And there we go, lots of bits. Lots and lots of bits. Right, what was I gonna do? I was gonna populate a player board, wasn't I? So the player pieces for purple are here. Now, this is the bit that I'm really keen to see because during development, um, I came up with the idea that rather than having these shelters off board, if you had these shelters on your player board, they would cover up the spaces where your colonists go. And therefore, it was very easy to say, oh, I've, I've, I've built this one and you've got two additional spaces. Ian liked the idea and Ian then incorporated it into the graphic design. And that is the end result, which is really nice to see. 
So we have all of these pieces. Now I've already got a set of these pieces because Panda sent me a copy uh, early because I was doing demos of this in the UK. Um, so yeah, got all of these pieces already. Um, Vince is saying the board looks to have three opposing hinges. That is the type of decision I love hearing about. Okay, there we go. Nitty gritty production details. There we go, it is sitting flat, yeah. Um, so yeah, lots of pieces. Now the cubes are gonna go in this slot here. These are your progress cubes. So you've got five of those. Bring, there will be here somewhere. The rockets go in here. Or the ships, these are, these are the ships. These will go in here. Uh, let's just zoom in a bit more. There we go, that goes on there. Your bots actually go off, off board and your astronaut figure will go on the main board. What else goes on here? Uh, the colonists, the colonists live down there and that goes there. These are nice. These are nice and chunky and thick. Uh, Eagle Griffin always do, yeah, thick tiles. So I think that is the start. Need the other two cubes. There you go, nothing's missing. Uh, and that one will go on the board and that's the points marker. So that's the player board at the start of the game. Oh, except you get these resources as well. These resources have come out really nice. So, one of each. Yeah, one of each resource at the start of the game. And also a crystal. And the crystals they've gone with are these light blue ones. So you start with a crystal there as well. Right, so that's a player board at the start of the game. Um, but anyway, yeah, you can see these pieces. So these, these are all good. These came out really well. Um, and yeah, the shelter tiles, this is all pretty thick carbide. I don't know what that is. It's probably two mil. Yeah, maybe two mil, but it's very, very sturdy. And let's have a look at the rest of the pieces for those people who don't know. This is the building tray. Now, good, the good news is this stayed together. So there we go. That is, that is the building tray. This is really nicely done. And uh, where are the start tiles? I think the start tiles are in here. Ah, does each player? Oh yeah, they start that way up, don't they? That's it. Yeah, player, player shelters actually start that way up because the cost to build a shelter is an oxygen, which you can see printed on the back of the tile. Right, so that's the starting one there. So you'll have the starting shelters on the start spaces. Um, and then where is the starting? Is it here? Yeah, here we go. Here's all of the starting. So we have the starting mine, which always goes in the middle. And then let's zoom out a bit. There we go. And then the other ones will go in random positions around the outside. Uh, and yeah, and then you'll be building more of these during the game and they should slot together nicely like that, just so that they, they don't move around that much. So yeah, as the game goes on, you'll be basically building up the colony on Mars. This is not a cooperative game. It's not really even semi-cooperative, even though you are collectively building up, building up that. Anyway, right, so that's that tray. Cards. Oh yeah, a whole host more stuff. What's in here? Cards. Right, I said I was going to explain how the scientist board worked. So let's just bring this down a bit. Uh, I'm going to have to bring it down a bit more. Right, there we go. So you can see the scientist board. So what happens at the start of the game is you will have all of the contracts and I appear to have two different types of contracts. Oh yeah, this was a stretch goal thing, I think. Um, so you'll have the contracts here. That's where they start. But the scientists, now, where are the scientists? Ah, they're in the box here. Oh, and I've got another type of contract as well. Right, okay, so there are the contracts. And another type of contract, right. So scientists, what's going to happen is these are going to start the game. Um, and where did they go? That one goes there. 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 And that one goes there, right? So they are the scientists at the start of the game. And you can see on the board the cost to buy the scientist. So let's say I decide to buy this scientist here, which is the biochemist. That costs two water to buy the biochemist. And then what happens, you will replace it with a contract card of your choice from the deck. 
Let's say I replace it with that one. And the contract card goes on the bottom half. So you can now see that the cost to buy this is actually a crystal. So it's just a really nice way that the costs for the two different types of cards, um, the way that they've done that. Um, anyway, right. Rick saying they look loads nicer than the prototype. Yes, but the prototype was handmade by Vittel himself. Um, yeah, these cards, normal quality cards for the solo game. Uh, blueprint cards. Yeah, these are nice. Again, I've had so many different versions of these. Um, you know, over the over the the month that we've been testing this game, that it's really nice to see the final ones. Right, there's more stuff in here, but it's just lots more, lots more cards. Uh, yeah, more cards for the solo game, more of these cards. Good thickness. Yeah, everything everything's there. It's all it's all fine. Got more all little scientist meeples. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah. These, these, these. This is one thing that I liked. I'm just going to get these out because again, I haven't had these in the prototype because these are very much nice to haves. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, right. And let's put the board back in the middle and zoom out a bit. Right. So extra little wooden pieces that came with the game. This is the colony marker, which goes on here, and this tracks uh, the colony basically, as the colony levels up. So it starts off at level one. Even though the marker is on position two, you look at the number below. So that means it's a level one colony. Um, and you have these four markers. These will track how many of each type of building there are on the board. So if you build another greenhouse, this marker will go up. And then once they've all gone up to that level, the colony will level up. So these are just really nice. And then you've got this ship. This is a shuttle that goes back and forth, which is the very unique uh, worker placement part of this game. The board's divided into two halves, and if your if your astronaut meeple, in other words, your your player marker, is in orbit, you can only do the actions in orbit. And if your astronaut is on Mars, you can only do the actions on Mars. Which is yeah, it's quite a cool little thing. Anyway, is there anything else you wanted to see? As I say, there's there's loads more bits of cardboard in here, but it is just resource chips, technology chips, um, discovery markers, discovery tiles, whatever we called them in the end. And uh, yeah, a whole host of extra resources. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Just a very quick unboxing video. My plan is that this weekend I am gonna start working on the script, although I've, I've already done a tutorial and playthrough video. So if you wanna learn how to play the game and see me playing through it with a few friends, that video is already on my channel now. But uh, Eagle Griffin and Vittel both wanted one of my proper how to play videos with me just teaching you how to play the game you know with all of the close-up camera work and everything else i'm i'm planning to start the script for that this weekend and i'm going to be working as much on it next week as i can i don't know if i'm going to get it done before essen but if i don't i'll get it done um as soon as i get back from essen basically i've booked some time off after essen to take a bit of a break except i probably won't be having a break i'll probably be be doing this um but anyway that's that's that um yeah, hope you found it useful. I say, if you've got any comments in the chat, please let me know. But there's a 20 second delay, so I'm saying this now and it's going to be 20 seconds before you see it. And I'm getting hungry because I haven't had lunch. Anyway, yeah, thank you very much for watching. A uh, big shout out to all of my Patreon supporters that basically make these kind of videos possible. If you like the content that I make, please consider supporting me over at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And until next time, which might be tonight because I'm doing a live stream tonight, a live stream of Alubari, a nice cup of tea. So if you're interested in learning how to play that, tune in tonight, eight o'clock UK time. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Take care, everyone. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.